Hey guys, this is uh, Integrated Math 3, notes number 4. Um, here's your FLT. Go ahead, pause and play whenever you're ready. Um, originally, this part here was supposed to be in the previous notes, but I wanted to make sure that it was clear with understanding, so I'm just separating it. Um, so if you notice, factoring trinomials was on the last one, but we didn't actually go over it. So we're actually continuing off from notes number four here, okay? So same idea. You guys want to know not just the how to factor trinomials, but you also want to know the when, okay? So before we do, here's a quick recap. So GCF is when you had a certain amount of terms and you took out what they had in common. You took out the greatest common factor, okay? But to answer the when, okay, when do you use GCF? Always, okay? It doesn't matter how many terms you have, two terms, three terms, four terms, five terms, you should always be able to check for GCF, okay? Now, the next one here was the difference of two squares. Now, difference of two squares is very specific, well, first off, you have to have a difference, and you have to have two perfect squares, okay? So this one, you would only be checking if you had two terms, if you had a binomial. And even then, that's not enough. You have to have a difference, and you have to have two squares, okay? Here's the last way of factoring. It's, um, it's called exhaustion. But don't be afraid by that. It doesn't mean exactly what you think it means. Um, it's not tiring in a sense. Actually, if you get better and better at it, uh, you could be actually very efficient with how you factor. But factoring trinomials, you can only use this when you have uh, three terms. All right, and I'll show you a variety of, of examples here. But... Um, for those of you that learned this, okay, here's something that I want to preface right away. Depending on how you learned it, okay, I'm going to ask you to unlearn some of those things, okay? Some of you learned how to use the diamond method or the X method or the small X, the big X, the special X. I'm going to ask you guys to throw those out the window. The reason is, one, there's not a lot of logic behind it. And two, the one that have that has a lot of tricks to it, there's no logic to it, okay? So I always like to pursue math with things that make sense, okay? And if it doesn't make sense to you, then what's the point, right? If it doesn't make logical sense, then why are we doing what we're doing? So here's what we're going to do. Here's a little bit of a recap, okay? If I ask you guys to... Simplify. Let's say I had 2x plus 3, x plus 1. Okay. Uh, I'm going to have you guys pause and play here real quick. I'm going to ask that you guys expand this. Okay. Multiply this out and then clean it up as much as possible. This is just like that last lesson in notes number 2. But go ahead and pause and play. Feel free to look back at your notes if you need to. Okay. Okay, here, so you would either use the distribution method or the area model to multiply this one out. doesn't matter which way you do it. I'm going to go ahead and distribute here. 2x times x is going to be 2x squared. 2x times 1 is a positive 2x. Positive 3x times x is a positive 3x. And positive 3 times positive 1 is a positive 3. We're all multiplying there. I noticed that there are two terms that I could actually combine right here, two linear terms. So I'm going to have 2x squared. That gives me five of those x's and then a plus three. So today, if you notice here, I have a quadratic because of the square, but I have a trinomial. So the technique here for today is whenever you're given a trinomial, can you factor it? So pretty much today is 
How do we go back to what we started with? Okay, so this is called the exhaustion method. Now, the reason why it's called exhaustion is because you have to exhaust all possible ways that this can work. Now, that doesn't mean that you have to try every single way. It just depends on how fast you get the correct answer, right? So something that you guys have to keep in mind right now, don't worry if you don't get it right away. It's not about speed. Okay, it's not about speed, so just take your time, understand the concept, okay? And however long it takes, that's however long it takes, but just understand that if you practice more, that speed will build up, okay? So here's what you do. What you're gonna do here is, you're gonna look at your first term, the squared term here, and you're gonna think of all the possible factors of 2x squared, so in other words, what number times itself, sorry, let me take that back. What number times what other number will give me 2x squared? So to give you an example, 2x times 1x or 1x times 2x. Okay, the other way around, right? So if you think about the factors of 2, there's only two possibilities, 2 times 1 or 1 times 2. Okay, now what you do over here is you look at the last term, positive 3, right? So you could either do 1 times 3 or 3 times 1. Now over here, you could even do negative 3 times negative 1 or negative 1 times negative 3. Those still give you positive 3 as well, okay? And I put those in parentheses in a bracket um, because, well, I'll show you later, all right? So here's what you do. You're going to go ahead and factor this. So you set up two blank binomials, okay? So here's what you do. You look at your first term, everything in green, and you just guess, okay? You throw in either this pair or this pair. I'm going to go ahead and use the first pair here. So I'm going to put 2x right here, and I'm going to put 1x right here. We don't know if this is right. We're guessing and checking by exhaustion, okay? Now, you look at your last term, you're either going to use 1 and 3 or 3 and 1, okay? Now, the reason why we're only going to focus on the positives in this answer and not the negatives is because you notice that everything in the problem is positive, so most likely, we don't even have to consider this negative part. So I'm going to go ahead and erase that there. Okay, so we have two choices. We could either put the 1 and the 3 here or the, th or the 3 and the 1 here. We don't know. So we'll just guess. So I'm going to put uh, the positive 1 here and then the positive 3 here. So what you do is you multiply two things to check. Here's how you check to see if you're right. You multiply the outside. Okay, 2x times 3. 2x times 3 is 6x. And then you multiply the inside. 1 times 1x is positive 1x. If you add that together, what do we get? We get 7x. And then you take a look. Well, is that my middle term? And if you notice, it doesn't match up, right? So that tells me that I have to go back and guess and check again. So I'm going to go back. So maybe 1 plus 3 didn't work. Maybe it's the other way around. Maybe I should do plus 3 and plus 1. Okay, so let's check now. We're going to check our outer. 2x times positive 1 is positive 2x. Positive 3 times 1x is positive 3x. Well, if I add that up, I get 5x. Is that what I have in my middle term? It is. So, that means this is the correct factor. And that's exactly what we started with, if you take a look there. So that's the whole idea of it, okay? You're guessing and checking. Now, how do you, throughout this lesson, how do you strategically guess and check so that you don't have to guess every single possible way. All right? Okay, so here we go. Here's example one. 
Go ahead and factor. We'll write this out once. And let's start off with part A here, okay? Let's do x squared plus 8x plus 12, okay? So we do the same thing here. First step, you try to break down the first term. So what times what gives me x squared? That only looks like it's 1x times 1x. And you could put the 1 there if you want to. And the other way around, which is really the same thing, so I'm not going to write it out twice. So there, there's not a lot of possibility, which is good for you because that means there's less to work for, okay? Now over here, what multiplies to 12, right? So here we have a variety of options, 1 times 12 or the other way around, but I'm not going to write it. 2 times 6 or the other way around. 3 times 4, or the other way around, okay? And don't forget all of those negative versions as well. Negative 1 times negative 12, negative 2 times negative 6, negative 3 times negative 4, and so on. But everything in this problem is positive, so most likely I won't need to consider those negative values, okay? And I'll show you some examples where you would have to, okay? So here we go. We're going to stencil out two binomials. You always start with the first one here. So the first one, there's only one combination. So we know it goes there and there. Okay? So now your job is, well, out of these three pairs, which one do I pick, right? Now remember, we're, we're guessing and checking, but then you build strategy now. You're trying to guess and check to the point where you're going to get that middle term. Right, which middle term here will get me that 8x? So let me uh, dabble with this here, okay? Let's say you thought it was plus 3 and plus 4, okay? And you don't have to write that down, but let me guess and check for you. We check our outer. x times 4 is 4x. 3 times x is 3x. If we add that, we get 7x. Does that match? It does not. So we know it's not 3 and 4. Well, what if I put 4 and 3? Would that change anything? x times 3 is 3x. 4 times x is 4x. Does that give me 8x still? No. That gives me 7x, right? So we know that this can't be it. And you keep going, right? But then eventually you can narrow it down. Obviously, if I choose 1 and 12, 12 is probably too large of a number in order for us to get an 8x, right? So probably the best guess here is plus 2 and then plus 6. So let's check. Outer, x times 6 is 6x. 2 times x is 2x. If we add that, do we get 8x? We do. So we know that this is the correct factor. Okay. Now, pause and replay if you guys need to, all right? Let's keep going. Let's try another one. Here's part B. Here's one for you guys to try. x squared plus uh, 11x plus 24. Go ahead and pause there. Try it out on your own. And then play whenever you're ready. Okay, so first what we do is we check the first term. The factors of x squared is just x times x. That's pretty easy. 24, there's a couple of combinations. There's 1 and 24. There's 2 and 12. There's 3 and 8. There's 4 and 6. Okay? Now, if you're not good with your multiplication, the only way to get better at it is to keep practicing. So don't worry if you're not good at it. Just practice. Okay? So here we go. Two blank ones. The first ones are easy because it's just x and x. We only have one possible way. Now, which out of these are going to give us 11x? I'm leaning towards 3 and 8. 1 and 24, 2 and 12 are probably too large. Okay, so if I put plus 3 here and plus 8, let's check. Okay, that gives me 8x. Here, that gives me 3x. If I add it, I get 11x, which is what I want. So I know I'm good. Hopefully you got that one there. But if not, let's keep trying. Here's another one for you to try. 
x squared plus 8x plus 15. Pause and play when you're ready. Okay, factors of the first term is just x times x. There's no other combination. Factors of that last term is going to be 1 and 15, or 15 and 1, and 3 and 5, or 5 and 3. Okay, so here, if I just thought about this, I'm not going to go in order. I would assume that 1 and 15 probably doesn't work. Okay, so I'm going to use x and x, and I'll probably use plus 3 and plus 5. Okay, multiply that out, we get 5x. Multiply the inner, we get 3x. That gives me 8x, yay. So we know we factored it correctly, right? So that's the whole idea of it. Now, what makes this a little bit more difficult or more challenging, right? You have to put in a little bit more thought the moment you have more possibilities, okay? So over here, if you take a look, there's only one option. Now, what if there were two options or three options or four options, right? So that means uh, the amount of possibilities increase by a lot. So let's try this one out here. 2x squared plus 7x plus 3. Okay. Now here, our possibilities are 2x times 1x or the other way around. Okay. 3 is either 1 times 3 or 3 times 1. So here there's not a lot of possibility, but you still have to guess and check. So take a look. We always put in our first set of factors in. Now your job is to figure out, well, is it 1 that goes first and then 3 or 3 and then 1? Remember, our goal is to get 7x. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and probably put 3 here and plus 1 here. The reason being is because I know whatever I put out here, I'm going to have to multiply with the 2. So 2 times 3x, sorry, 2x times 3 is 6x. 1 times 1x is 1x. That gives me 7x. Now, would it be correct if I put it the other way? Take a look here. Uh, the same thing. Would it be the same thing? And I hope you guys say no. The outer here would give me 2x, and the inner would give me 3x here, which gives me 5x. So make sure that you guys are always guessing and checking uh, your answer there, okay? Put it correctly so that we don't think it's the right answer. Okay, party. Let's try another one here. Let's try um, 5x squared plus 19x plus 12. Try this on your own. Play when you're ready, okay? So here, what multiplies to 5? Well, I know it's going to be 5x times 1x. Now, you don't have to put the 1, but it's up to you. Now, over here, though, we have a few combinations. We have 1 and 12, or 12 and 1, 2 and 6, or 6 and 2, and 3 and 4, or 4 and 3. We're going to ignore all the negative ones because everything here seems to be positive, so most likely we don't have to consider it. So here we go. We always put in our first set. Since there's only one combination, we'll put that in there. Now remember, your goal, you guys, is to get 19x. Okay? It's not so obvious what you should use here. So what do we use, right? Um, we want to get 19x. Here's what I do know. If I put the 12 here, it's going to get too large because 12 times the 5x would give me 60, right? So I know 12 can't go there. And I know 6 can't go there because 5x times 6 is 30. I've already surpassed 19, okay? So I know it can't be 6. Um, can it be 4? No, that'll give me 20x, right? So most likely, I should either put 1, 2, or the 3. Okay, so let's try this out. If I put 1 here, then 12 has to be right here. Does that give me 19x? 
Outer gives me 5x, inner gives me 12x. That does not give me 19x. Let me go back. So I know it can't be that one. Okay, now what if I put plus 2, plus 6? Uh, outer is 10x, inner is 6x. That gives me 16. Close, but not exactly. So I'm going to go ahead and go back again. It's probably not 2 and 6. So it leaves us with... Just one other possibility, maybe three and four, okay? Notice how I didn't write everything out. I kind of thought it out through with you guys. That's what's going on in my head. And slowly you're training yourselves to do the same, okay? Outer is 15x, inner is 4x. If I add that, I do get my 19x there. So I know this is good, okay? Hopefully you got that too. If not, this is why we practice, okay? So let's keep going, part F. We'll do a bunch. Let's try uh, Let's try this one here. 9x squared plus 66x plus 21. Okay. I want to say again, don't worry about speed. Just take your time and understand it. Okay? Don't worry about speed. Pause and play when you're ready. Feel free to try this one on your own here, okay? Now here, what makes this a little bit more complicated is that 9x squared has a couple of factors. I can do 9x times 1x, 1x times 9x, or 3x times 3x as well. Because 3 times 3 gives me 9, as well as 1 times 9. So the more combinations you have, the more strategic you have to be with which ones to pick. 21 is 1 and 21, or 3 times 7, or the other way around. Since everything is positive here, we don't need to consider the negatives, okay? All right, so here we go. And I'm going to tell you guys right now, I don't know the answer. But I'm going to show you what I'm thinking through, okay? I'm going to try out uh, 9x and 1x. Okay, I know that if I put 21 here, it's going to be too large. And if I put 7 there, that'll give me 63. That means I'm getting really close. So you know what? I'm going to try that. Plus 7, so that means plus 3 needs to be here. 9x times 7 is 63x. 3 times 1x is 3x. Oh, there you go. I just happened to get it on the first shot, okay? But it, you guys got to understand, it's not luck. You're thinking it through in your head, and you're eliminating possibilities that would probably not work, okay? Now, if I tried everything over here and it didn't work, I would probably then start using 3x and 3x. Sometimes you got to go through it a few times, okay? All right, now... Here's the last set, okay? The moment you incorporate negative signs is when it gets a little tricky. So here we go. 3x squared minus 8x plus the 4. Here's how I like to think about it, okay? We're going to do it the same way. Notice how there's a little minus sign here, okay? Okay, the factors of 3x squared is just 3x times 1x, okay? But that's it. Now, 4 could be 1 times 4 or 2 times 2. Okay, so here's the thing. The middle term comes out negative. So you know you have to deal with negatives. Okay? The only way I can multiply out to get a positive 4 is if I have two negatives. Okay, so let me simplify this for you guys even more. When you guys look at your last term, if it's a positive, you know your signs are both going to be the same. They're either going to be both positive, positive, or negative, negative. Now, if your last term is a minus sign, like a minus 6, a minus 12, you know your signs are going to be different. And I'll show you that there too, okay? So here we go. So we know we have to have the same signs, okay? So I'll put in what we know already, 3x times x, okay? 
I know that if I put positive, positive here, there's no way I'm going to get anything negative, right? Because in the last examples, if I stuck with all positives, there was no way that I got any negatives in between, right? So logically, the best thing to do here, since that last number, that last constant is a positive, I know I have to have the same signs. So I'll probably use minus minus here, okay? So the only thing left to question is, do I use 1 and 4 or do I use 2 and 2? Okay, so what do I do? So here, I'm wondering if 1 and 4 will work. I know that if I put 4 here, it probably won't work. If I put 1 here and 4 there, I'm probably going to get 7. So I know that won't work. So... You guys can essentially do this kind of in your head to see how it plays out. But if you can't see it in your head, write it out, okay? I'm thinking 2 and 2 will work. 3x times negative 2 is a negative 6x. Negative 2 times x is a negative 2x. If I add that, notice how it's same signs. So same signs we add. And then we keep the sign of the larger number, which is negative. Notice how it matches, so we know we're good here. Okay? Let's do another one, H. Now, uh, try this one on your own. Let's see. Um, let's do 5x squared minus 18x plus 9. Pause and play whenever you're ready, okay? But take as long as you need to, and then come back to me. Right here, the factors are 5x times 1x. That's the only possibility. Here I have 1 times 9 or 3 times 3. I look at my last term. It's a positive, so I know it has to be the same signs. That's like the worst arrow ever. It has to be the same signs. So it either will be positive, positive, or negative, negative. But since my middle term has a bunch of negative so i'll probably lean towards using minus minus okay 5x and 1x goes in the front so do i use 1 and 9 or do i use 3 and 3 3 and 3 would probably work better in this case because 5x times negative 3 is negative 15x and negative 3 times x is negative 3x same signs we add here i'm going to get 18x and we keep the sign of the larger number Notice how it matches, so we know we're good. Now, if it... Okay, here's part I. So this is where it gets a little tricky. Doesn't get complicated. You just have to be a little bit more precise in what you're doing here, okay? So here we go. 4x squared minus 15x minus the 25. Okay, what's different about this is that if you notice your constant, that last term is now a negative number. And all the previous ones, they're all positive, right? So all the signs are going to be the same. Now, if you have a constant that's a negative, that means your signs are going to be different. Okay? So you're going to have some type of positive and some type of negative, or some type of negative and some type of positive. But those signs have to be different. Okay? So let's do the same thing. Here we go. 4x squared breaks down into either 4x times 1x or 2x times 2x. 25 breaks down into either 1 and 25 or 5 times 5. Okay. Now, this does get a little bit more technical because if you take a look at the beginning, there's actually two possibilities here. But I'm just going to start off with 4x and 1x. I really don't have a clue on what I should start with, okay? I know I have to have one positive and one negative. Where it is, I'm not sure, okay? I'm going to say that maybe 1 and 25 is probably not something that I want to use to get 15 just by looking at the numbers. So I'm going to try 5 and 5, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and make, uh, I don't know, let's say this one minus and this one positive. See what happens, okay? So outer... 4x times positive 5 is positive 20x. 
negative 5 times x is negative 5x. That gives me uh, different signs we subtract, so that's 15x, and we keep the sign of the larger number. And we kind of have what we want, except there's a negative here. So anytime you guys have the right number but the wrong sign, that tells you to reverse your signs here. So this should be a plus and this should be a minus. Now let's double check just to make sure. My outer is going to be negative 20x. My inner is going to be positive 5x. Different signs we subtract. We keep the sign of the larger number and notice how it matches now. Okay. Now, if I tried the 5s and the 1 and the 25 and it didn't work, I would probably jump to 2x and 2x and then try those as well, okay? So big takeaway, you guys. If your constant is a negative, you're going to have different signs when you factor. If you have a positive number, you're always going to have the same signs, all right? Okay, let's keep going. Let's do, I think, one more how to do it. Part J. Because you guys will have a lot of practice uh, during your lesson as well, okay? So let's do, uh, let's do, let's do this one here. 16x squared plus 60x minus 100. Actually, no. Now that I take that, I take that back. Let's do, um. 6x squared plus 7x minus 49. This will be the last one for the day, okay? Okay, so I noticed right away my constant is a negative. So what does that tell me? Pause and play when you're ready. That tells me that my signs are going to be different, okay? So I'm going to have one positive and one negative or one negative and one positive, okay? All right, let's write down our factors. 6x squared. 6 times 1, or 2 times 3. 49 is either going to be 1 and 49, or 7 times 7. Okay? I don't know what to start with, so I'll just go in order. 6x times 1x. Now, I'm aiming for a positive 7x, so it looks like 1 and 49 may not be a good place to start. I don't think that's going to work. So I'm going to try 7 and 7, but remember our signs have to be different. So where does that minus go and where does that plus go, right? So minus plus, let's just see what happens. That gives me negative 42x. Right away, I could tell that this is probably not going to end up with a positive 7, so I'm just going to stop there, okay? So what that tells me is, I've tried the 1 and the 49 in my head. I don't think that's going to work. I've tried the 7 and 7 right here. And since 7 is the same number, doing it backwards is not going to be any different. So what that tells me is, that tells me that 6x and 1x may not be a good fit. So what I'm going to do is I'll probably put a 2x and a 3x here. And this is exactly what you guys are going to go through as well, okay? Um, so here, 2x and 3x, let's see, 1 and 49 is probably not going to work. I'm going to try 7 and 7, and let's go ahead and do uh, positive here and negative here. I'm just going to guess. Outer is going to give me negative 14x. Inner is going to give me a positive 21x. Different signs we subtract. I'm going to get 7x, and I keep the sign of the larger number. Oh, look at that. It worked. Now, if you got the right number but the wrong sign, you just have to flip your signs there, okay? You're going to have a lot of time to practice on Delta Math, so let me know if you guys have questions. It takes practice, so don't think that you have to be good at this right away, okay?